The following presentation is brought to you through the paid memberships of NotaryStars.com, the only notary training platform and resource library with over 150 hours of training on every loan product under the sun. Together with our sister website, OnlineNotariesPublic.com, which focuses on notaries who are pioneering in remote online notary, we strive to give you a safe place to ask questions, get answers, gain confidence in your notary career, and achieve success without overfabricating the truths about our industry. If you would like to support us, please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, sharing this video with a colleague, or becoming a member and trusting us to help you achieve the level of success you desire. Well, hello everybody. Happy Halloween, even if it's a day early, because we won't see you tomorrow, right? Happy Halloween to you. Um, thanks so much for spending time with us tonight um, for our nationwide general mentorship. This is for notary signing agents, and uh, we thank you for allowing us to be a voice along your path to signing agent excellence. This is where questions become connections, and we all have a chance to make our industry a better place. This public training session is held every Monday, except for holidays, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard, 8 p.m. Eastern, and it's all about you the Nationwide Notary Signing Agent Community. Please remember, if you're driving, this meeting is being recorded, and we would prefer if you're watching live while driving, keep your camera off and remain on mute. We want you to keep your eyes on the road. We care about your safety and your well-being. You can always come back to our replays on YouTube anytime you wish, and if you subscribe to our channel, you'll get notified when we post fresh new content, like the replay of this session. Ronnie should be posting um, the link to our YouTube channel in the chat, so you can subscribe today if you like. For those of you who aren't driving, we invite you to turn on your cameras. And really, it's just so much easier to interact with all of you when we can see your faces. My name is Beth Hathut. I'm currently the lead instructor for Notary Stars, as well as a 22-year notary signing agent. Today is Monday, October 30th, 2023. I'm joined um, by Ronnie Mickle, the founder and co-owner of Notary Stars, Unlimited Ink Notary, and Online Notaries Public. With us tonight as well is Mr. William Bumfrey, or Bill, as some of you may know him. Our, he's our expert remote online notary instructor here at Notary Stars. We have several wonderful questions and topics to address tonight, and we invite you, if you aren't driving, turn on those cameras, show off those big smiles, and get ready to ask your question or share something you know with your colleagues here today. Don't be shy. Don't be timid. All you have to do to get into queue is virtually raise your hand by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. This is your time, and we want to hear from you. Mr. Mickle, are you ready to kick off our meeting? Yes, and first of all, I want to say happy Halloween's Eve to everyone. Um, I thought we would start tonight out with a little bit of tales from the dark side from the notary world. Um, I'm trying to be cute with that. It's also educational. But I would like to ask, uh, as we move toward the digital age of our careers, please turn on those cameras and let's see your beautiful faces. It doesn't matter to us if you're cooking dinner. We're not setting alone documents tonight. We can bring them up and talk about them, but you don't have to be staring at the screen. You could be cooking your dinner. We'd love to see your children running around in the background. Um, you know, if you got someone walking around in the underwear, maybe stay off camera. But uh, you know, other than that, we'd love to love to see your faces. It makes it much easier to go through. Um, so over the last couple of years, I have scaled back on the horror stories about notary signing agents. Um, you know, I was notified the first couple of years of Notary Stars, hey, Ronnie, you're kind of abrasive. You might want to tone it back, be a little bit more inviting. But you guys know how I feel about this industry. It is something that you really need to know what you're doing in order to, to kind of hang your shingle out and start to get business. Otherwise, you don't stay in business for a long time. And there are other places that, you know, train, you know, come in, take two hours of training, and there you go. And that's just not how it really works. 
Um, I want to give you a story that actually happened at Unlimited Inc. this week. I feel sorry for the wonderful escrow officer that put up with this. Um, but I want to explain to you how you could cost someone their book of business and then no one will ever want to work with you again. For those of you that are in states or have been told that as a loan signing agent, and I'm talking specifically about attorney-only closing states at this moment, uh, which is where this happened and where it seems to happen the most, if you have been told that you are not allowed to go over loan documents or that you can't know anything about them, you have been misinformed. As a loan signing agent, you are to take the package from title and escrow. You are acting as a third party notary who is supposed to be able to deliver that package, go over every document in the package, know how it's executed. Sure, we only have a limited description, which we talk about at Notary Stars, what you're actually supposed to be able to go over and what you should know about the document and how it should be executed. We had a notary that this file started out on Monday morning, very early at Georgia time, like at 8 a.m., 10 a.m. signing. Should have been scanned, reviewed, and shipped same day. The notary had to go back to the appointment, not once, not twice, but three times. There were over 15 errors in the package. Um, on the first time that we called them, we were told, I have signings today. I can't get to it. We never put business in front of other business, but fortunately this was, you know, not closing that day. So we let them proceed. They second time they had signings, so they had corrected, but they hadn't sent them back to us. So on the second signing, we're already two days late and they're pushing the signing to ship. The third time they take the package back and they tell the signers, you know what, you do this yourself. Now keep in mind, these are first time home buyers. This person has been taking their documents to their house, taking them back saying they're, they're gonna scan them back to the title company, then taking them back to their house. The last time she said, you know, here, you do it yourself. The signers didn't know that they needed to ship the package or that there was even a shipping label mixed up in all these jumbled documents. Fortunately, they did reach out to their title uh, officer. What should have been a one and done and closed on Tuesday did not close until Friday. And thankfully, you know, a title doesn't want to reach out to the signer and say, have you, have you heard from your notary? Because we haven't. That's embarrassing. So in the midst of all of this, and if you guys have ever had an error with unloaded ink, we do send you an email. We let you know there's an error. This is what needs to be fixed. We call you. We go over it. We expect you to fix it. The notary actually sent back um, two sentences with three cuss words in it to my staff, which was forwarded to the platform that we use to manage notaries. And she probably, well, actually, I know won't be processing orders anymore anytime soon for that demeanor. Training for your job is really important, or you may not have a job. And I say that with a smile because it's just common sense. But there are still people out there that lean in to people saying, hey, I don't really have to know how to you know, execute these documents. I'm told that I'm an attorney-only closing state. If you are in an attorney-only closing state, or no matter what state you're in, but if you're in an attorney-only closing state, that means you are only not allowed to go over documents for a property located within your state. You can still be the notary, um, and you can still work for an attorney, and that attorney is going to want you to be an extension of their desk. But you are not able, allowed to set up a shop and you know close loans for a title company. You're not an attorney. It has to be processed by an attorney. So you have to have your training. You cannot um, be a loan signing agent without training. You will ruin your career. And it's best to keep training on loan documents. So I just wanted to let you know, and if you think for a moment, that smarting off, remember, most signing aid services are recording their phone calls. Most of them, you know, an email can be screenshot and sent around the world in 30 seconds. It fast, Screenshots travel faster than earthquakes. That's actually true. Um, people on Twitter a couple of years ago said that they got the message about the earthquake before they felt it. Your career can be over in a flash. So just if you make mistakes, Listen to the company that reaches out to you and work with them to get them remedied. Um, and so I just wanted to point that out because there is a lot of things on the internet that we read and we see, and there's a lot of names out there. And let me tell you, followers don't mean anything, okay? I can have 
triple the amount of followers at Nobody Stars tomorrow if I wanted it. I just don't want a bunch of buggy accounts and people that aren't really notaries following us. It's very easy to go out and buy followers and say that you are some big trainer and that you're well, that you're, that you do, and then point everyone back to their notary handbook and tell them that they have to know it. That's not what we do here. And that's not what we're going to promote here. So I just want to let you know, that was my tales from the, the dark side, since it's Halloween, you know, it should make you nervous that other notaries are out there doing it, this kind of work, because it gives our industry a bad name. It drives down rates for us. If we were all acting as sales agents for our title escrow and signing services, our rates could possibly come up. But when there's so many people in the industry being mistrained and misinformed, then that's what drives it down because we look like a dime a dozen. Every single one of us should look like a diamond that somebody wants to buy. And until we pull it together as a collective community, that's not going to happen. So spread the word with your fellow notaries that training is really important. The way to bring up fees is that if we are all so good at our jobs that they can't live without us. You know, there's always going to be new people coming in, but tap those people and say, hey, you got to know what you're doing. Okay, let's get to the questions. And by the way, guys, this is uh, your session. So we would love to hear from you and have your questions up on the screen. If you have something that you're working through in your notary business, please go ahead and virtually raise your hand. But we're going to start out with um, with questions that we've been written in. Um, Ms. Beth, do you want to start with the first question? Yes, let's see what we have here. Um, so last week we talked about what ID documents we can accept for signers um, on general notary work, but what about loan signings? Um, and that person who wrote that in uh, decided to remain anonymous, otherwise we'd be calling her up. So um, general notary work and loan signings are not going to be any different. That follows your state requirements, and every state has a different set of rules on what IDs are acceptable. Driver's license, state IDs, passports, uh, expired or not expired by three years, one of those types of descriptions you're going to find in your handbook, um, credible witness in some states. So when we talk about the difference between general notary work and loan signing, it's not uh, different, except for when you get into that credible witness situation. You dealing on a loan signing, you can't just decide to use a credible witness because they don't have a physical ID that qualifies. You have to get that um, pre-approved through the lender or your hiring company. So if you are in a position where you have to use credible witness, you have to get that cleared through title or signing service first. Hopefully that answers your question. And Ms. Beth, I want to uh, add something to this. There, 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 We see this a lot at Unlimited Inc. And, um, you know, I don't want to talk down to notaries at all, uh, but I want to put a big emphasis for most of you throughout the country that you need when you are presented a passport, unless it says United States passport on it, that is a moment to stop and think. I see a lot of notaries who will do a conduct a loan signing and their state does not allow them to take a foreign passport. Um, and so when you don't see the two big ones, number one, state issued driver's license or a United States passport, that is your moment to stop and say, let me check my notary handbook. And I like to look at mine virtually because they update them all the time. I like to know where it's located on the Secretary of State's website pop it open, know what that page is, go right to it. You want to stop and think. For instance, in Arizona, <clears throat> we are not allowed to uh, uh, take a foreign passport um, unless they're, Beth, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't do, I haven't done a signing for a while, but um, in Arizona, there has to be uh, a visa in the back of that passport that says that they are legally entered into the card. And now we can take a, a consular card as well. But loan signings, you can put your signers through an entire signing without that being a valid form of ID. And the lender can come back and say, no, this isn't good. Or they can close the file. And later, if something happens, 
you were the notary who improperly notarized the documents. So the big two, state-issued driver's license and United States passport. If you don't see those, it's time to double check. I know Ohio, and I know Amy Seitz is here tonight, or at least I saw her here. Um, uh, I know in Ohio, they're very lax on the type of IDs that you can take. Um, so you would want to know those type of IDs. And we have another situation like this coming out of Texas tonight. Um, but uh, Amy, what in Ohio, it, to my understanding, it's very, uh, very lax for IDs, correct? And I gave you co-host there. Oh, yes. So yes, Ronnie, it definitely is. I don't need an ID that has a picture. It doesn't have to be government issued. It doesn't have to be valid. It could be a piece of mail mailed to you and given to me. As long as I'm comfortable that you are the person that, that you are, the ID issuance does not matter at all here in Ohio, which is pretty unusual with what I've seen. And then, you know, the, to, to this will go into a later question that we have to, or a situation that we ran into uh, this week at Unlimited Inc., which I think I want everyone to know. Um, just because it's okay in your state, you have to realize that a lot of times as a signing agent, you are appeasing the laws of other states where they are going to want that driver's license or United States passport and becoming a, a difficult notary uh, saying, well, my state says that I can do this. That's right. If you were notarizing a power of attorney that was only going to be used within your state walls, sure. But you are, as a loan signing agent, you are often signing properties that are not located within your state and for lenders that are not located in your state or for title agencies that are not located in your state. So you want to stop and think when you are conducting loan signings. Just because you can do something doesn't mean that it's going to appease the underwriters of the two big entities that give you most of your business, okay? So I just want to point that out uh, to everyone because we're going to have something like this come up in a, a little bit eight, uh, later in the conversation. We do have a hand raised now, Ms. Beth. Do you think we can jump over to Ms. Nancy's question? Absolutely, Ms. Nancy Fauché. Would you like to unmute and ask your question? Yes, as I swallow my peanut. Um, <laughs> this is a Ron question. Um, if I'm doing a run and the signer just cannot pass KBA because they don't remember 25 years ago what their zip code was, is it okay to switch it over to biometrics or is it they failed KBA and then that's just it, you're done? May I? I'm going to pin both of our Ron experts onto the screen right now. We're going to put them under large scrutiny for this question. So uh, Amy, you go ahead and Bill, we'd like, love your thoughts too. Awesome. So I saw that she had a tag that she's in Florida. Yes. Because you're in Florida, it's okay to switch without any kind of time constraints or anything like that. You've got no legal aspect of accountability as long as they can validate either through KBA and ID credential analysis or credential analysis and biometrics in Florida, you're good to go. Good to know. Okay. Cause I had one that was like, I, don't, I didn't know what to do anymore. All right. I get them all the time. So, so I'm an Ohio notary. I don't, I don't have biometrics and there are a ton of clients that they're investors. I don't know what streets, the closest street. I don't know what hospitals, the closest hospital. It, it's kind of ridiculous. And then on the flip side, I did a test and the amount of fraud for KBA, the ID quiz, is higher than the amount of fraud for biometrics. And it was an independent study that I did. And anyway, so you can get me going on this for an hour. But point being, no, you should not be worried if you, someone can pass biometrics and not KBA. Okay. So do, would it be best or safe to go ahead and start with biometrics i'm gonna say that's gonna defer to the underwriters uh, requirement for whatever transaction you're doing thank you Amy. It, that, that that is i was hoping that was going to come out of your mouth because yeah we have found personally at unlimited you can remember our sample size is about 300 well actually it's almost 400 clients now um 
our sample size seems to want them to go through KBA. And we actually have one client out of Florida that says they have to do KBA. They will not accept biometrics, even though it's that it's legal. So we're all still learning from Ron. So you need to make sure with your clients how they can pass uh, pass through. Um, you always want to find out, you know, can I put them through KBA or do they have to go through biometrics? Now, I know Bill's probably going to have a different take because you're out of Nevada. Bill, what's your uh, take on this? Well, we also are in a state that doesn't have biometrics. So, I mean, if they can't, if I can't get them through with KBA, then I can refer them to somebody like a Florida or Virginia, somebody that has biometrics because I don't have that option to fall back on. But uh, just like Amy said, uh, there's a lot of underwriters that will not accept uh, the biometrics. So before you even bring it up uh, to the client, don't bring it up to the client. Say, let me check with escrow and I will have them get back to you. Because if you bring it up to the client and mention biometrics and then talk to escrow and escrow and title don't want biometrics, then it kind of creates a little bit of a problem. So your best to just kind of say, you know what, let me uh, get back to you on this. I'm going to see if there's some other options and kind of leave it at that. Okay. Uh, just so you don't step on any toes. Perfect. Thank you. And guys, I want to bring up something since we're talking about this. Um, we have seen a large uptick in Ron signings for vacant land and cash purchases where they absolutely want them to go through Ron. And if anybody doesn't understand why that that why they would want them to go through Ron, it is one of the highest targeted real estate fraud transactions that there is. And so if you are a Ron notary, please make sure you are doing your due diligence and not just relying on camera for KBA or biometrics to do your job, okay? If you do not feel that the person in that ID is the person and they need to be able to hold it up, you need to be able to see it clear on camera. If they don't have a clear camera, you can't read the information and compare it to the IDs, you can't proceed, okay? Because it's being recorded. And if it is a, and I'm gonna say, if it is a cash purchase or vacant land, they're not saying, oh yeah, we're gonna put this through so the notary takes the liability. They're just saying, we're gonna use Ron so we can have that video. They're not expecting to catch the notary or put the liability on the notary. They're doing it so they have the footage. It's the problem is when they need the footage of you doing your due diligence that it's gonna come back and bite you, okay? That's that's when it's gonna come back and be a problem is if you don't do your due diligence. And you know, I know Amy is a lot about having, she gave it out at the NNA, the whole script. And I know Bill teaches a script that you can use. There's a whole checklist that Ron notaries need to go through. I call that Ron safety. You know, like I grew up as a deer hunter son. So there was like all this safety training, like how to hold a gun and how to go hunt. I don't hunt, never shot anything in my life. But, you know, as a deer hunter son, I had to learn all these things. Ron is kind of like that for me. You got to know how to put, check your checklist as you're going through a Ron transaction. Um, let's get Jacob's hand and then we'll go back to the questions. And Jacob... Uh, I actually have a, a, a situation that happened with you this week, and I'd like to talk about that, but let's get your question out first. I want to add on to Ron. Okay. Uh, we're, we're starting to hear you now. Yeah. Okay. My internet's good. Um, for no flash. I mean, I'm just taking call like any would for notarization. So even though they've passed ABA, I'm old religious. Like I would need with any signer, really. I have to check the ID and make sure that that's, you know, who you are. I had this one signer time had an ID it was still valid and everything. And the picture was for 2020. So maybe three years ago, but it looked nothing like them. So, of course, I was like, I could to write you unless you've got something else that's more current. Because it looks like, especially text your driveway, it could be years. It could be a decade since you got your last picture taken. So, 
um, yeah, really be careful. Even though they've passed KBA, don't rely on that. It, it kind of act like you're there in person with them because that KBA is just supposed to really, you know, say, okay, we had this additional layer because this is online. But really, it's up to you if you're going to accept that idea or not. And if you're not com if you're not comfortable, request secondary form. Thank you, Jacob. Um, I'm actually going to bring this up since you're up on the screen now. Uh, this is something that Beth and I learned something on this week. Um, so we had a signing at Unlimited Inc. And I will tell you, Jacob was an absolutely amazing notary for the file. Uh, he did nothing wrong. And I will, I'm very proud to bring this up, but I want to explain why we're bringing it up. If you are located in Texas, um, and this is the only state that we know of, it actually says that you can use a rubber stamp as your notary signature. However, we talked about this earlier in the meeting tonight, you are appeasing all the states that it's going back to. That means title agencies, lenders, and what the underwriter says that they're going to accept. It is so not today yet accepted to use a rubber stamp as a notary signature, but in Texas, it says you can. And I talked to Jacob and I said, I'd love to use you on more files, but for our signings, can you actually sign your name? And in true professional notary standards, he said, absolutely. And I said, you know, if you're working with other clients, you may want to ask them before you use this stamp because they're going back to, you know, county recorders that are digital recording. The stamp got through our scans because I, if correct me if I'm wrong, Jacob, but it's actually your signature that you sent in and had turned into a stamp and when you scan in your file we can't see it so it goes through quality control we're like you're good to go you didn't miss anything he ships it back and then title gets it and goes this is not a wet signature and you know then it's evident and then they go we can't record this at the county recorder's office and so just because something is legal doesn't mean that you should do it because remember we work with title agencies and we work with lenders and they may be, uh, they may not be able to accept those progressive means of signing our name and those things. We had a situation like this come out of Indiana. I wish I could name this guy. He was a pill. Um, I mean, really just horrible to work with. In Indiana, you do not have to write your commission expiration date into the notarial certificate, but he left it blank and it went back to a state and a lender that said, we will not do this. And he did it on all documents and he pitched a fit, threatened to sue signing order, threatened to sue us, blah, blah, blah. You know, and a, a lot of times notaries will defer to, will they have a correction agreement? Correction agreement for title is only for people who work for the title agency and the lender's agree correction agreement only applies to the lender. It does not apply to your notarial certificates. Okay, I wish they put one in there for us, but then who would notarize it? We need another notary at the table, right? So do not be difficult. Um, that guy wound up getting removed from signing order for being so difficult and saying, well, this is so good in my state. You are a signing agent. Your job is to close loans, help assist close loans, help assist close seller files. If you're not willing to do that, if you're going to just hold a, you know, a, a knife up and be like, no, I won't go any further then you're in the wrong industry. And that's just the truth. You have to understand that what's legal in your state may not be legal in another state, or it may. And here's the thing. If he wrote the commission expiration date in, it's not going to hurt anybody, right? And we're not talking about Jacob at this point, but Jacob actually was, I'm very proud of him for saying, hey, you know what? If it's going to help everybody out, he did everything that the title agency needed him to do to remedy the situation. He said an all-purpose acknowledgement shipped it out. We gave him a shipping label. Everything, you know, is, is done today. Very proud of how he handled the situation. But the cool thing was, is I jumped in the conversation right after Jacob sent an email to title saying, uh, because the president of this company reached out, she cc you know, our team and Jacob. And she said, Hey, you know, and Jacob wrote back and he said, here's my here is where the information is located that this is okay for me to do. And that calms everybody down. You need to be able to back what you can do with your state. I mean, it came directly from the Texas Secretary of State's website. 
He did not break any rules. And in fact, because of that, I doubled your fee, right, Jacob, or gave you more money or or something like that. I was so proud of him for knowing where to go to to say, this is how this is done. And we have a great relationship with this title company and the president of that title company. She was actually like, I learned something new today. Everybody learned something because Jacob was prepared to say, this is where it's located. And that's what we stress with you guys is to know where it's located. I know Miss Beth can attest to that. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. You need to be very familiar with your handbooks, your state statutes, and be able to back up what you're saying is true. And then the other comment I wanted to make just really quickly, Ronnie, was almost every class we touch on those certificates and we talk about the very thing that you just said, leaving that commission expiration date line blank in a certificate that somebody else created. As long as you deem that certificate legal for you to use in your state, you need to complete all of the information they are asking from you unless you're unless it's unlawful for you to do so. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be considered an incomplete certificate. And they have every right to kick it back. Yeah. And guys, you know, I, I, I'm not an attorney, nor am I practicing legal advice. I know you guys have said that yourselves as well. Um, but if I was an attorney, I'd always be looking for that one technicality that I could stop some or make something go my way. Remember, you know, if something goes to court, what are they going to look for? The one thing that they can do to say, and you never want them to say, well, this isn't really cool because the notary didn't put in their expiration date and we need that in their handwriting. You know, you don't want to give anybody a reason to say, you didn't do your job, it's all your fault. <laughs> um, Jacob, you had something else to add on to this conversation? Yeah, so I had an actual different question, if that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Great. So, um, a lot of the packages that I'm getting nowadays, you know, early on in my career, which early on in my career was about two, three months ago, you know, I didn't get this, but now I'm getting this, like these instructions to notary sheets that like are calling for me to, you know, sign and say, Hey, I notarized this package. Everything's good here. Blah, blah, blah. It's just for the title company to look at and be confident. And, you know, honestly, um, whatever if it makes them feel comfortable i'll sign the damn thing i'll move on with my life but some of them are calling for me to affix my seal of office to that um which i never do it's actually prohibited by texas state law you cannot affix your seal of office to anything that is not an official material object. um so whenever they do that i just attach an unsworn declaration saying this is the law in my state i can't affix my seal have fun is that kind of the right course of action to go or what What would you be your advice? I'm going to let Beth handle this, but I just want to make sure. And I know that um, I know that you are meaning this with love and kindness. But when you say I attach it and say have fun, we want to make sure for anybody watching and anybody watching the replay that Jacob's not really saying have fun. He is thinking have fun and then sending the professional version of that along. And I know Jacob is because I've seen him send the professional version along and didn't say, ha ha, have fun. Um, but Jacob, we have to make a disclaimer there because someone watching may interpret that and say, it's okay to talk like that. So we want to make sure that we give that professional foot. Miss Beth, how about you tell how notary stars handle that particular situation? Yeah, it's never okay in any state to place your seal or your stamp on anything that is not an official notarial act. Um, we've even had situations where people post in Facebook these cute little packages they're going to drop off to title companies and they'll put a label on it with their notary stamp stamped on it so that they have their name and, and everything and they know who the goodies came from. That's totally illegal in all 50 states and the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico and a couple of other places, right? Um, so when... What we normally run into, particularly in loan signing packages, is the title ID document. That's where you're recording information 
um, for your signers on a document that stays with the title company. There'll be a little place down at the bottom that says sign your name and it has your title under it, notary public. And then to the, uh, you know, one side or the other, it says uh, notarial seal. And sometimes they try to hold your feet to the fire and get you to stamp that. So rather than just ignoring it, guys, just print very neatly near that indication um, to place your stamp there. Just say unlawful to place my stamp here and leave it at that. Um, if they kick back and they say, I've got to have your stamp on here, then you can do what Jacob's done is pull your state regulations that tell you that you can't use your title of office or your seal um, for anything that is not an official notarial act. And that means either a verbal oath, right? Or a certificate. So, and you're gonna do it in the spirit of educating them as well. You're gonna be nice about it. You're gonna say, gosh, I'm really sorry. You're not gonna say, here you go. Here's my statue, see you later. No. Do it like your, because they may not know. They may not realize that you can't just stamp anywhere um, on any document. So just do it nicely, professionally, and in the spirit of educating them as well. Ms. Beth, I want to kind of get through this next question. I checked to see if Gary's not, uh, if he's here tonight. He's not, uh, but I want to be able to mention his company name because I just think it's the cutest in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and his question won't take long to answer. And then we'll go to the hands raised. Um, Gary wrote in and he says, what does the notary do or say to the client when the notary, uh, and he meets the signers, uh, when the docs are not provided until very short before the signing is scheduled? Um, I'm sorry, but I have to mention it again. This is from Gary and I'm not calling him a geezer. He named himself that. He has a notary company named notarygeezer.com. Love the name. I love that he's playing into being his age. Um, and he's a very good notary. Uh, but this is a very good question. And I, I want to say that, you know, most escrow officers and lenders don't want you to alarm the signers that your documents are not ready. You want to work closely with your assigning party. And this is why we have mobile printers and mobile scanners. I cannot tell you how many packages that I have printed outside the signer's house or inside that signer's house. This is why we are geared. And this is what is expected of us in 2023. You know, I remember before I could afford a mobile printer or a mobile scanner 15 years ago, and that was because no one could afford them back then. Um, they were not as, you know, made as they are now. It was a big to-do. Um, you had to have the package shipped to you or to the signer. You showed up. Sometimes you never saw the documents before you got there. It was a whole thing. And then you faxed them back. That When we say scan backs, I'm like, scan backs, no problem. Fax backs? That's a problem. <laughs> you, try, you try faxing, okay? Let's go back to 1980 and fax a loan package, okay? That's, that's yeah, <laughs> that's difficult. That was um, painful. That's why we have the mobile printers and mobile scanners. We get ready to service our clients. We are in a streamlined world now. I mean, when you order an Uber, if it takes more than 10 minutes, you just cancel and be like, oh, I'll take a lift. Well, that's how Title and Escrow feel about the notary not having a mobile printer or mobile scanner. You know, things are pretty streamlined. Lenders sometimes are doing things up to the last minute um, mm -hmm. in order to get the loan. So if you have a problem where you're not going to be on time because of the loan documents, you need to work with your company. And I always ask the company, can you let the signer know why I'm going to be late? If they need me to take one for the team, I need to be ensured that I'm not getting the negative review. You know, if the loan documents are late, am I allowed to tell them the lender doesn't have them yet? Some title officers will say yes. Some will say, absolutely not. You need to work with your assigning party and work closely with them. And if you're working for a signing agency that doesn't answer you, put it back on them. You know, there's nothing else you can do. If you're working with a signing service that doesn't answer the phone or give you guidance or help you, then they need to call the, the signers can call the signing service for all I care. Because unlimited ink, I pay way too many people way too much money to pick up the phone. Every signing service out there should be assisting their notaries. And if they're not assisting their notaries, they shouldn't be a signing service. And that's that's where I'll leave that question. Uh, and then we'll go back up to Nancy's got her hand raised and we're going to go Nancy, Susan, Wanda, and Sophia. Uh, Nancy, you are up next.
Okay. I was looking for my freedom. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've seen this before, but I'm seeing it more and more. And to me, it's a bit annoying, but I, I do it and I deal with it because that's what I'm asked to do. But what is with this? Here are documents stacked this way. Please send them back stacked this way. Or we'll dock your pay. Uh, sorry, I accidentally muted you there. Um, I, I don't know. Who is that company? Okay. Can you, okay. Now I'm unmuted. <laughs> Yeah, it's coming through um, signature closers. Signature closers. So, yeah. is it actually signature closers, or is it a company through signature closers? Because signature closers manages for other title companies, and then they manage for um, loan loan depot. Loan depot. Yeah, I do not feel that it is the notary's responsibility to disassemble a loan package coming one way and put it back together. If you choose to work with a company that requires you to do that then absolutely you can you can continue to work with them. But I do not feel that it is a notary's responsibility. We had a client who asked us to do this at Unlimited Inc. And we actually explained to them, believe me, this is not what you want to ask notaries to do in their busy shuffle from the signing table to the scanner to all of these things. You will get them back intentionally this place wrong. And you know, I don't think that that should be something that they could dock your pay for. If you miss a signature, you don't complete the signing, sure. But if you want to accept signings from a company that does that to you, to ask you to do things that really are their job, then go ahead. But the more notaries who don't accept orders that require that to be done, they will change their mind. Okay. I mean, I, I didn't know. I haven't seen it from anywhere else, always through them. And now, you know, I didn't do it one time. I, I was busy. I had other stuff to do. I didn't do it. And I got this lovely little email from them saying, strike one. I was like, well, have a nice day. Yeah. Jacob said, have fun. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Beth, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is uh, pretty much against all industry standards. Um, yeah, it's pretty rare to have that requirement placed on a notary. I will say that occasionally we'll see those types of instructions in uh, signing packages. But if you look carefully at the document that's giving those instructions, it's usually from the lender to the title company and not to us. So just be careful when you do see instructions that look like that, that they're actually directing that instruction to you, the notary. Good, good. good. I'm so glad you added that in. I wouldn't have thought of that, but yes, absolutely. You want to make sure it's addressed to the notary, but in Nancy's case, it was addressed to the notary. Yeah, yeah she got a strike. Oh, boy. <laughs> Bad girl. That's okay. I've got 30 employees with fake email addresses that can go leave Loan Depot a strike one, too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I'm just saying, if you want to treat people wrong, we can treat you wrong, too. Yeah. Ronnie, before we move on, we have a special guest here tonight um, that I'd like to go to next she's getting ready to go into an event um and i thought she might want to just pop in and say hello yes yeah, so let's let's get mr laura up or as i like to call her now deal laura laura <laughs> hi everybody i hope you can hear me okay um oh. My internet connection here is not great, so it took me a minute to come in, but I wanted to say hi. I am your health insurance go-to, so if any of you have any kind of health-related, health insurance-related questions, you can find my contact information on the resource part of your Notary Stars webpage. Uh, you can contact me through uh, my website or through the Calendly link is the easiest, fastest way to set an appointment with me on your time. Uh, obviously, it's totally risk-free. It's free for you to chat with me. And this is the best time right now because open enrollment starts on Wednesday. So definitely an important time to figure out your health coverage for 2024. And thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much for popping in, Deal Aura. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
we yeah. appreciate it. Delora just recently became a part of our family. And guys, if you are as an entrepreneur, um, we know it's tough to find individual um, insurance coverages um, outside of the marketplace. And that's why Delora has kind of joined us. She can definitely get you hooked up if you need some help with that. And guys, just to let you know, I, I did post the uh, the link to our website, but I'm also posting the YouTube video. If you have the calendar, Miss Delora, please post it into the chat. But if you go to the YouTube video that I just posted, posted of her presenting to us last week, it, I did put the calendar in there, but it's hard to grab that calendar off of YouTube. Actually, I just think I need to click it. Yep, I got it. I put it in there for you. So if you do want to learn more and you want to one on one with, with Miss Delora, um, I just posted the calendar into the chat. Uh, so that you guys can um, uh, also talk with uh, Ms. Delora one-on-one if you're looking for health insurance. Awesome. All right. Thank Ms. you, Ms. Delora. <laughs> All right. I think we should go to Susan Lindsay next. Good morning, Ms. Susan. If you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. So I'm new to this and I have two questions. Um, as far as joining not Notary Stars, do you recommend doing the $25 a month one or the one that includes marketing as well? Uh, that's a really great question and I'm glad that you asked it. Are you, do you have any background in this industry whatsoever? I've been in the mortgage industry for about five years. So if you sure. have a general overview of loan documents and that you're going to take the training, if you're wanting to streamline getting your business together, absolutely do the marketing level. Uh, because if you have a background in the industry of uh, some of the things that we teach you are going to be, you know, a little bit of repetition for you. And then you could go ahead and start the marketing. If you were brand, brand new, and I have to say this for anybody else watching, if you were brand, brand new, even though I, I mean, who doesn't like to make more money, right? But I always tell a brand, brand new person, like if you've never looked at anything in this industry before, always take the, the notary training first because you can always go through it again while you're doing the marketing. But if you are just getting started in the industry, you know, uh, but have a background, I would definitely say start with the marketing level as well because you can handle both. Okay, perfect. And then my second question is, I was kind of getting, I'm involved with Wix today to try to see how the website is you know, creating a website for my business. And um, my question is, can I get a business email through Wix or is that done through Google? You can, but my preference, um, to be honest with you, is to, if you have, if you don't have anything set up, do it all under Wix from this get-go uh, because everything's going to be under one roof. And especially if you're taking my course, I'm going to teach you how to keep your files there, how your website can actually work as like a really good file management system for you and your advertisements. So I would do it all as a package for Wix. And here's a little secret. Start out with a monthly plan because on Black Friday, they're going to do the annual plans, um, you know, 50% off, you know, 75% off. So you're at a time where it's like perfect to get in. Only pay yeah. a month for Wix. And then you can add everything on on Black Friday for because they do it every year. Okay. So join on Black Friday. I would say you can go ahead and start building the website and picking out your domain and all of that stuff, but they're going to give you, well, the, the Wix plan itself, but you can go ahead and pick your domain and all of those things um, and figure out which one you want, but then it'll all be under one roof. It'll just be much easier to manage. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Thank you so much. All right. And now we have Wanda Lopez up. You got to unmute. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hello, familia. How are you? I'm from Tampa, Florida. Uh, as you know, in Florida, we can be a witness as well. But what about if the property is outside Florida? Can we still be a witness or is upon um, request of the title company? Ms. Beth, do you want to answer this or do you want me to answer this? Go ahead. Well, in Florida, you can, like you said, be the witness and the notary on the documents. That's a authorized practice in the state of Florida. 
when you're doing something outside of the state of Florida, you can't be held to their regulations, their notarial regulations, and that's a notary law. So if the property is in South Carolina, and South Carolina um, says, hey, the notary can't be the witness, you can do it, you're in Florida. But I wanna caution you, on loan documents, you are um, working for that lender and that title company. If they specifically tell you on the documents, the notary cannot be the witness, don't do it, okay? Does that kind of clarify that? Now, if we're talking about a different document or not a loan package or maybe a power of attorney, they're gonna have their own set of regulations on those powers of attorney particularly if they're associated with uh, a living will, not a last will, but those health directives, right? They'll actually give you instructions on those documents, in particular, who can be a witness and who can't. So the answer is yes for you, you're in Florida, unless the lender or the document specifically tells you you cannot be. Perfect, thank you. And then, Ms. Beth, I just want to throw in these two cents as well. For Florida notaries, you also need to know what others, and actually all notaries throughout the country, you need to know what the five witness states are and how they work. Uh, we do have this under the roof at Notary Stars for uh, additional download documents. Um, for instance, if you sign a property that is located, and you're in Florida and you sign a property that's located in Arizona, it doesn't need a witness. And a lot of times the witness lines will appear, but it doesn't need a witness. And there are some cer certain states that even though those loan documents are formatted needing a witness, that you might have to go back and do it again because you added witnesses to it. So when the property is located out of your state, please make sure you download that takeaway inside Notary Stars that tells you what the five witness states are. And you just take a little peek to let yourself know, should this be witness or not be witness? They expect you to know these things as signing agents throughout the country. It should be something that you have in your little file book that you keep with you um, to make sure everything runs smooth. Would you agree with that, Ms. Beth? Yeah, and to take it even one step further, I've gotten loan documents in Arizona for Arizona property from a lender who is in, who was uh, whose home office is in a witness state. So what happens is those documents show up for me with witness lines on it. I know I'm not in the witness state. So I'm making a phone call saying, hey, these are formatted with witness lines, properties in Arizona. I don't think we need a witness, do we? You, you tell me. And they say, oh no, you can leave it blank, you're fine. So it helps to know what your witness state laws are. Yep. All right, guys, um, we have a question for Miss Sophia coming up in Whoever's hands are on the screen right now, we're going to cut it off at the last hand on the screen, uh, which is James Crocker. So we have three hands up. Sorry, Miss Nancy, I love you, but you you got in three questions. We are cutting it off. So <laughs> Miss Sophia, you are up next. Can we get your question, please? Okay. Um, can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going back to the notary uh, stamp. Um, I notice on a lot, I, I do a lot of work for OS um, National here in Riverside. And on it, it asks for all your notary information. I also ask for your, uh, your you know, insurance information. And it also asks for you to stamp it. I was always stamping it and marking through it and saying verify only so that they got what they wanted, but they could not use it. Is that still okay? Well, I got to tell you, personal opinion here, we have advanced so much technologically um, that even that's no longer recommended. We used to okay. recommend that, stamp it and then void it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all have iPhones where you can erase an image or an overlay on, on an image, right? can get rid of somebody in your picture, erase it. So um, there's a real possibility they can lift that strike and use your stamp for a nefarious reason. So just don't do it in the first place is probably the best course of action for you. 
Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure now that I know it'll be done. <laughs> yeah, and I think, and I'm going to say this tongue in cheek, I think Notary to Pro still has that in their training um, mm -hmm. process, but it, we've just progressed technologically so far past that, that it's just not a safe idea to do that. Got you. No problem. Thank All you. Right. Okay. Mr. Marshall Wise, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question? I'm unmuted. Okay. Hello, Ronnie and Beth and everyone else. I'm Marshall Wise from Florida. I am getting my feet wet in the business. And my question is, how do you ask for a higher fee without blowing the whole deal? For example, I was offered a $20 fee for a partial claim. I said, sure, for $40 and they accepted it. So for a selling package, they offer you 60, 65. I haven't paid a hundred in the past. How do you ask for more without insulting them? This is a signing a, company. This is a really great question. I see notaries blowing this one all day, every day. And I'll tell you, sometimes counter offering can actually get you blacklisted or what we're calling blocked. Now uh, we are moving that term over to being blocked. Um, listen, when I send out a seller file, I, I see notaries a lot. Like we have a client that's eight pages. It's eight pages and one notarization. We send it out for $60. We're only billing the title company $75. I've seen notaries who are across the street from the signing right back. I won't move for less than 150. And like, you can't write back like that. You just say respectfully, state your fee. Unlimited Inc. actually has a polite email that goes back. Hey, we received your conditions. If you want to put an example like, hey, this looks like it's a mile away, but I've got to go around the mountain. You know, uh, I got to take a ferry to get there. State your fee for whatever reason, but don't, don't put things like I'm not getting in my car for less than whatever, or, you know, because when you write that response, it's actually recorded in Snapdocs and, and the signing order. And then it can be attached to your profile for everyone else who may ever work with you to see. So you want to be careful when you respond, but if you respond reply, re politely, I have always personally responded respectfully. My fee for this location and time would be that. And it's just a small sentence. And I've gotten it down respectfully. My fee for this would be this. And I don't even give a reason. Just respectfully for this date and time and location, that. And I use for this date, time, and location. Because then when you say location, it puts in their mind that you may have to drive a distance. And if you say respectfully, you're negating anything that they could think about you. And it's just respectfully. Notaries inner city or large populations are held usually to the fees. So if you're in a highly competitive area and you know that you are, you're probably not going to get it counter offering. There's going to be a notary that says yes. If you are in an area that's not so populated or maybe has, you know, 40 notaries, counter offering could actually bring up your area. So I'm going to use Nancy Fauché as an example. She has 44 competitors in her area. I have 675. If I counter offer, probably not going to get a higher fee. Nancy, on the other hand, has way less competition. And if she's a good notary and she counter offers, once she's built that business with a repetition, she might be able to counter offer because they know what she's capable of. She knows uh, they they know that she's going to do a good job. If she asks for $25, $20 more, that might be a big deal. And I'll tell you, $10 more on every single order that you do in a month adds up. $20 more, $25 more. Don't get crazy on one order. Try to get your value up just 10. Try with five for the first six months, then try to go up 10, then try to go up 15. And then when you get comfortable, do your job, do it well, they'll only use you. That's how I did what I was doing. So does that answer your question, Mr. Marshall? Yeah, and also if you're uh, supplying your own witness and you're paying out of pocket for the witness, how much do you pay the witness and does the signing company re reimburse you? I am anti-notary supplying their own witness. We do it at Unlimited Inc. as well, but Unlimited Inc. pays the witness. Uh, we will pay, pay you to have a witness, but I really encourage you to train your clients that they need to hire a witness and, and 
you know, Unlimited Ink will schedule a witness to meet you there as well. We have paid notaries to bring a witness in, in dire need. But if you think about it, if you're paying a witness, you're paying someone you probably know to come and be a, a, a witness on a signing that you're doing. How much of that do you think is going to stand up in a court of law when they say, oh, well, how do you know each other? Well, he's my buddy. He lives in my house. This is my daughter. This is, this is you know, they have an interest in the work that you're doing and you're paying them. So I feel that a witness should be impartial and Miss Beth may, you know, agree or disagree, but I see her shaking her head that, that that's a good thought train process. You want to train your clients that they need to hire their own witness if they're really putting it on you. I say fifty dollars minimum. You know, we, you know, I, yeah. I'm just saying, and I, I own a signing agency. Come back with fifty dollars. So the signing company actually hires the signer to meet you at the signing. If you said you're going to need to hire the sign the the witness, Unlimited Inc. would schedule another witness to go out, and we would build the title company. Yes. All right. And we do it every day. So thank I you. <laughs> thank yeah. you. And 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 I've commented on this before too. I am adverse to providing witnesses for two reasons. One, the same reason that Ronnie just mentioned. If something comes back years down the road, and they know that the notary, the official at the signing, and the witness both know each other, both live in the same household, both, you know, maybe their husband and wife, then they might be looking at some kind of conspiracy theory there as well, right? So I don't want to put myself in that position. That's number one. Number two, it's tough to coordinate my job and the witness. And if the witness fails to show up, guess who they're going to blame? me. I just don't want that headache and I don't want that responsibility. So when they say, oh yeah, well, it's your job. You need to find a witness. Then yes, when you tell them your witness fee is $50 and that usually kind of blows them out of the water. Uh, Ronnie mm -hmm. Unlimited Inc. pays what? 30, 35? We pay 10. No, I'm uh, we, uh, I think it's 25 that we offer if they want to bring a witness, uh, but we we try to get the clients, you know, title companies want to be, I'm, I'm, I don't want to call them cheap because they're my clients, but they want to conserve funds. Um, so that would be the, the correct term. But, you know, if I was a notary and I was the one taking order, I would say $50 if I have to do this work. That means you have to pick up the phone, find someone, bring yeah. them along. That's a lot of work. You know, and I know some people are like, well, I'll bring my daughter. Well, guess what? Your daughter has a vested interest in what you're doing. That, to me, wouldn't fly in a court of law. If I was an attorney, which I'm not an attorney, nor am I practicing legal advice, you guys will have to say this many times in your career, and I'm saying that right now. If I was an attorney and I was looking for a technicality, well, I wasn't a witness. That was that lady's daughter. That was that guy's son. You know, why, why would we proceed with even hearing this? It's all their fault. Um, I don't want anything to come back on me. And if I paid someone to be there, now I'm giving you 50 bucks. Because, and, and, and if you guys might want to know the backstory of why I'm like this. And we'll go into the last question from James. The reason I'm this way is because you guys know I got run over by a car early on in my notary career. And the day I got hit by the car, I actually told the guy, I said, don't worry about it. Just go buy a copy of my poetry book. And we'll be, you know, we'll be fine. I'll live. I didn't know. I was in shock. I did not know that my back was broken in three places. It was two days later when I found out that my back was actually broken because I was in shock. I was walking around with a broken back for two days. And I told this guy, you'll be fine. I'm sorry. You made a mistake. It wasn't until the pain set in and the x-rays came back and everything was fine. They tried to use that as a technicality in court, saying that I sold him a copy of my book, which he did go buy. They tried to say that as a technicality that he did his insurance would never have to pay for my spine that was broken. You have to be very careful how you do things. You are working with legal documents, and attorneys are trained to look for that technicality to get someone out of trouble, to make a document invalid, to validate a document. 
a witness is if you pay a witness, they are no longer just an innocent bystander that saw this happen. They're now being employed by you to sign this document. So you want to be very careful with that. All right, uh, we're gonna move, uh, Mr. Marshall, thank you for that question. That was a really great question. Uh, Mr. James, you are our last question for this evening. Can you hear me, Ronnie? Yes, sir. I won't, this is a, not a question. This is a compliment to Miss Beth. She personally called me on an issue I had with, with Notary Stars. She took the time out of her busy day to make a direct phone call to me and help me out. Now, you talk about customer service. You can't get no better than that, Ronnie. That wow. is perfect. And I want to give her kudos for that. And thank you for offering the question and answer. It's my first visit, and I loved it. Thank you, sir. Thank That's you. all I got to say. I appreciate it. Thank you, James. But you need to know that's the way we roll here at No. I like it, Miss Beth. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, for those of you that may be just visiting us for the first time tonight, um, there's probably not 70% uh, of the people on the call know if you send an email, we always get back to you. We always pick up the phone. We try to call if it's an important issue. We always email back. I can't not tell you how many times a day we hear, God, I can't believe we got you on the phone. <laughs> we are not the only people that work at Notary Stars or at Unlimited Inc. There are 30, almost 40 people now in the background that makes this happen. We just happen to be part of the faces of the, the training sessions. Uh, but people can't believe that we pick up the phone, that they can actually talk to us. We have processed education for nearly 10,000 notaries to date. In the last almost five years, this will be our fifth birthday coming up in April. Um, I would like to take the time to start closing the meeting, but I want to say this. Notary Stars has reached unparalleled levels of notary training. We train on every loan product under the sun. No other course tells you that. We have every single loan product, signature variants, that you are going to encounter. We go over page by page. We offer live training if the previously recorded videos are not assisting you so you can really get it into your brain. We offer real-time phone support no matter who you're working with, no matter what you're up against. As long as you've taken the training, we don't point you to just your state handbook. We teach you how to really run your business. And then when you're ready, we also offer unparalleled marketing training, SEO training, I don't see anybody else bragging about how everyone in their class is on the first page of Google because my students are. <laughs> we have discounted this for the last four years up to 50%, whether it be the first month or the full year. And we've always honored the rates for whatever you lock into. This year, we are at 30%. I am competing with people who are charging thousands of dollars and doing thousands of percent less of training. Yes, we have a free YouTube channel. You can watch videos like this. You can interact with us. But your memberships to our platform are only going to bring in new instructors like William Bumfrey, who teaches Ron Notaries because he is a Ron Notary and is successful at it. We are looking to bring in other trainers in the new year. This is not a membership drive. We are comfortable where we are. But if you want to see how far this ship can sail together, memberships are a thing. And I would love to see you Commit to an annual membership this year, and whatever rate you lock yourself in, you'll be locked into that rate. If we ever drop prices, you will be honored at those rates, no matter who you are, what membership level you're on. We have a code, all in caps, signing agent excellence. If you want to convert before the end of the year, this will only be valid until December 31st at midnight. And I will not, for the last four years, I've said, oh, don't worry, 15 days later, all the way up to February or March. It will be stopped. The annual memberships will stop at December 31st. We are 10,000 notaries in, and I got 45,000 more notaries to go. We got some big surprises for you coming up in the new year at Notary Stars, which I can't say just yet, but it is happening, and you guys are going to love it. Um, but I would love to see you, if you're not already a member, cross over that threshold, and I promise you we will treat you as we've treated everyone before. We are not going to promise you the moon and the stars. You are going to do that yourself. We're just going to help be that guiding light to get there to make sure you know how to do your job. 
um, Miss Melissa, only because you guys know I can hardly say no, Miss Melissa. I we're closing out, but I can't say no to you. Real quick, so how much is the the new price in December? So the new prices are the same prices as they were last year, only the discount is less this year. And I'm moving toward never having to discount again. Um, we know our value. So this year it's uh, it's 30% off. Last year it was 50% off. Um, so if you commit to an annual, um, you have to go to the website, put in this code signing agent excellence. I know Notary Star Plus Marketing, that's $500, $504 a year, uh, which is 30% off the $59.95 a month, but you have to do the year. And then Notary Star level, I can't do math in my head like that. You just go put it in and it'll tell you. I think it's $252 if you commit to a year. Last year, they got it for $150 and $300 and something. So this year, essentially prices went up because the discount is less. And I will tell you, I was a little nervous to do that, guys. We have not slowed down on memberships. All right, guys, I want to ask you to turn on your cameras. I think this has been a great session. I want to ask you to turn on your cameras so we can truly close out in Notary Star fashion. And if you've never seen this before, it sounds kind of vulgar, but it's true. If you are not naked, please turn on those cameras. Let's get our signature wave going so we can wave to ourselves if we come back and watch the replay. Wave to those future notaries who are going to come and see this for the very first time and be struggling with their jobs and learning how to figure everything and then come and join us in the future Mondays. Miss Beth, how do we say it? Professionally. I remind you guys that the more you learn, the more you earn. Okay. And just remember that everybody's in the same storm. We're just not all in the same boat. Some of us have yachts. Some of us have canoes. There's Leah. See, she's getting out on there. Uh, and some of us are dog paddling. So just be kind. Remember to reach back and grab the hand of that notary next to you and bring them along on your journey. Show them the way. Thanks, guys. Good night, everybody. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween.